Hey guys, Trev here from SpineWise. Um, today I want to talk to you about something a little bit different. Today I want to talk to you about the effect your jaw could have on your entire body. Not just your face, not just your migraines, but I want to talk to you about the effect the jaw can have on the entire body because it's something that's often misunderstood. The effect of things like neuropathy and temporary mandibular dysfunction and these type of things on the human body because we sometimes think that it's restricted to a jaw issue. When really in, uh, in the broad spectrum, what we really know is this thing's known as the godfather joint. It just affects everything, everywhere. So I wanna give you some bit of a breakdown on how things are affected. So to start with, we wanna talk about the simple stuff that we've spoken about in the past, and that is when the jaw is dysfunctional in this area here, we alter input into an area of the brain called your cerebellum, which is a big cauliflower looking thing at the back of your brain. Um, thanks for watching, it's always good to know someone's watching. Um, yeah, please like, please share the video, thanks for that. Um, so if, you're, um, uh, if we start to have problems in, in this area here, the information being sent to the brain is altered from side to side. Um, and as the cerebellum is affected, um, we won't get the stimulation to our frontal lobes that we need. And the net result of that is our frontal lobes can start changing in their function. Now the big thing with our frontal lobes that come across the front area of our brain through here is that our frontal lobes really are our executive function. So we see uh, things like um, uh, anxiety, depression, motivation, all these type of things very closely associated. These psychosocial kind of issues are really closely coming involved with people who have temporary mandibular disorders, uh, neuropathies, trigeminal neuralgia, these type of issues. Um, and this is one of the big reasons for it, that link between the cerebellum and the frontal lobe. Likewise, when the jaw starts going haywire, face pain is a common thing as well, just that chronic face pain that comes through. The other thing that happens is that that input is actually sent into the upper part of your brainstem, especially an area called your mesencephalon or your midbrain. And when your midbrain starts getting changed, this can affect uh, inputs from your eyes and from your ears. So we often find people getting light sensitive, sound sensitive, tinnitus being developed, visual disturbances as a result of dysfunctions through those areas. Um, and then we also want to remember the, the link between um, midbrain and the actual um, head pain pattern in itself. So I've commonly seen association between that and frontal pain, frontal headaches, uh, not to mention migraines. We've got a ton of videos associated with TMJ on migraines on our site that you can have a look through if that is relating to you. All right, a few other things that we often don't think about. So the first one is when the jaw gets haywire and the jaw starts moving, we're just gonna change my color here, um, and the jaw starts moving from side to side, the effect that has is that the neck actually can often rotate with that. It tends to move with it. And as it tends to move with it, we start getting neck issues as well. So now we have a jaw problem being a primary issue actually creating neck pain. Um, and sometimes this can be a really hard thing to diagnose because people will trace around, they'll, they'll see practitioner after practitioner, they'll get all this work done, everything seems to give them a little bit of relief, but it just keeps coming back and coming back and coming back. Uh, and this is one of the things that we often look at is the link between the jaw and those areas. If we keep heading down now, um, when the jaw goes haywire and we start having our brain affected by it, we tend to lose extensor tone, which is the back part of the arm, so behind the shoulder itself. So if we were to be behind, it's right through that area. So those tendons, those muscles at the back part of the shoulder blade, through that area, just not firing very effectively. The result is we start losing stability in the shoulder. The shoulder starts dropping forward. Um, and this can create a lot of shoulder problems, especially at the front of the shoulder for people. Um, the other thing that we often see is that when people lay it down at night, it either gives them numbness, pins and needles or tingling in their hands, or they wake up in the morning with a weak feeling in their hands as well. So that's another common sign, a common thing we see with these type of patternings happening. Then as a result with this as well, we also know your sacroiliacs, which if we go to the back side, not on the front side here, um, if we draw your sacrum in, which is that big triangle bone that sits at the bottom of your spine, um, if we draw that in, one of the things that we often see as well is the sacroiliac joint, which is where the spine and the um, pelvis uh, actually meet. Uh, so that's the joint that forms this area here on the back we're talking about. Uh, that kind of joint as well, that often is affected and we start seeing motion changes with TMJ as well. So, okay, so this is some of the things we've observed over the years. If we keep heading further down, I'll run out of space here on my man, but if we keep heading further down, the inner aspect of the knees will often drop. That's one other big thing we find. So if the legs are here, knees are in this area here, then we've got our feet down the bottom there. They tend to start rolling in this way. So we start dropping and we start getting patellar tracking problems, 
anterior knee pain, uh, and then everything associated with pronation in the feet. And it can go both ways as well in the sense that pronation of the foot can cause the knee to roll in, which can create tension and alter TMJ function as well. So as you can see, there's not too much of the human body that can't be affected or, or won't be affected when the, t when the jaw is dysfunctional. And this is why we see so many people develop these chronic pain patterns when they're having jaw problems that just seem to affect everything everywhere. And we haven't gone into the neurological side of things. Uh, all we've done is just stuck to basic structural things and the effects that they have in terms of shoulder pain, knee pain, ankle pain, back pain, neck pain, headaches, migraine, face pain. Uh, these are all common things that we see associated with people who are having problems with the jaw. One of the most important, if not the most important joint in the human body. Anyway guys, if you have any questions, if you have any problems, you're not too sure whether this is related to or not, thanks again for watching. Um, but if you have any, any issues with that uh, in any way, shape or form, just message me, post down below where you're having issues with, I'll get in contact with you, we'll have a chat and see if there might be able to see something that can be done for you, some pointers or tips that I can put you into the right direction for. Anyway guys, have a fantastic day and uh, we'll catch you in the next vid. Bye for now.